uh, it secures the principal for community use. Are there, are there a set of so, principles? So, so, so the accepted set of principles? So the, well, there will be. So the partnership agreement will have that in it, and then J is wider. Then that that covers off that agreement and the other agreements that will be developed. Just regard. I mean, no one at the moment knows what the community usage requirements are. No one. No one can say there's going to be 15 volleyball teams. There's going to be two indoor netball teams. We don't know that. Uh, but we need. That. Pardon? What? Be about that. Yeah, roughly that. Yeah. <laughs> We've got no idea, well, have we? But we do need to have the principle that this is not a grant such that a, a school can get us a, a gymnasium. It's a grant so that school gets a gymnasium and the community can get some locked in usage of that. that yeah, some so, so that's easy. It's the hours of use. Yeah. So if you look at the opus. And those details shouldn't be determined here. Yeah. We don't know. That. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right. So. Um, that seems to be the collaborative efforts of everyone. Um, so I'm just checking with you, Megan. Is that that satisfy yep. you know, the certainty that you are looking for? Yeah. So yes. Right. Absolutely. And yep. Lance, you're happy what? with that in terms of being able to carry out a council? Yes, and we can draw up that the high level email you that has those principles in it mm -hmm. and the funding and the funding commitment okay. by the 31st of March. Okay. And then Jay alludes to then mm. there'll be other parts to it that are work through the detail later on. Right, and I mean a report back to us about yep. how it's all going. Absolutely. Okay, so mover and second, are you happy with that? Right? Okay, so if there's no other questions on this and no amendments. Yes. If things don't run under budget, why don't you just what why are we just not saying it's four and a half million. What, why this separated out half a million? Uh, so this, this is, there was four million in the long-term plan. Yep. And then we're saying that we grant up to four and a half million. So there's, there's an extra half a million on the four million that's brought forward, so that's why we've had to specify that separately. So why are you saying up to? I mean, if you're putting it on the table, why would anyone take less than the up to the, the figure? Because we've got to work through the design and then get the construction costs from Arrow International, who the MOE have contracted. And if Arrow said the council shares only 3.8, why would we give 4.5 million? So it's protecting the council's interests in the event that the... No, no, if we approve funding of 10 million and only 6 million is drawn down, that's, that's what happens. And then you don't uplift for you know that happens already in other councils. You approve the maximum you think you're going especially to in our give. capex budgets. Yeah, you approve the maximum and you you use up to that. And if you want, if there's any difference, then you come back to council. So I think and just on this point, I think it is quite important that the two amounts are separated because this is a proposal to advance the funding already allocated in the budget of four million, mm -hmm. and in addition add another 500,000. Yeah. So I think that's, first of all, quite important because then we've got the transparency on that. Secondly, perhaps it's just the words of... If you want to take it up, out, yes. out of that, then I'm Let's comfortable that. with that. There's always run over budget, don't yes. they? We're, I mean, we're not liable for any more that's... And just increased to 500,000. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Or increased by 500,000. By, sorry. Yeah. 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 So then that, that and, and you're quite right, councillors, that um, the staff know to sharpen the pencil and, and, you know, if there's savings, they'll deliver them. So I think that picks that point up. Yeah. Councillor King, does that answer your question? Uh, yes, in, in I, $120,000 a year. Um, how is that inflation proofed? Or is that a going forward forever? So that, that pans out into the 10-year plan, and we have an inflation overlay across every year of the 10-year plan, except some items are not included in the inflation proofing. But this one, is this one or not? Well, this one, a grant is normally not included okay. in the inflation because we've specified a set sum. OK, I'm happy with that. I yeah. just wanted to get clarity. OK. Now, Councillor Mallet. <coughs> The fourth, the four million dollars that has already been approved, but is being being brought forward, Correct. has got some degree of paperwork behind it. I assume. Correct. 
Now, if I ask you to show me that paper, it was an, it was an estimate. Okay. So, where, so okay, that, that's not my point. My point is, where's the five hundred thousand come from? It's come from the MOE's um, construction team. Oh, okay, so that's that has come from a, an yep. objective yep. assessment of so they use PC a, rates on the square. It's not just a, okay. Sort of all right, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay, councillor. So we've got a, a, a motion now moved and seconded. So I'm going to go to the mover of the motion, which is Councillor Forsyth. Do you wish to speak? Thank you, Worship. I think uh, <laughs> Megan Campbell has said it quite succinctly. It's do or die, now's the time. Look, timing is everything, and the time is now. So this process of an indoor rec centre has been in front of council since 2007, so nearly nine years. So this today has been nine years in the making. And I know around this table there have been uh, one or two councillors that have really supported and driven uh, this, this uh, project throughout that time. Um, so I'm really happy to be sitting here and uh, in this position where I believe we have the support around the table, where, as I said, the time is right. Uh, there is no time like now to have a partnership and have the um, Ministry of Education, a foundation, board of trustees for a brand new high school, along with the input from significant members of the sporting community uh, that have really uh, worked together to, to bring this towards, to us today is um, it's a wonderful opportunity and one that we need to really take with both hands. So I hope that we are going to have a, a unanimous um, support around the council table today. Uh, in the event that we don't, I think that we will still have uh, the support <coughs> And uh, this would be a fantastic day, not only for the city um, of today, but for the, for the city of the future as well. So I urge you and encourage you and, and uh, looking forward to the next few minutes. Thank you. OK, thank you. Any other Councillor McPherson? Yes. I, the only slight difference I'd have with Councillor Forsyth is that uh, I think the time is overdue now, both for the community recreation facility mm -hmm. and for the high school, actually. That was several years late, um, but it's happening now, and it's great. Uh, it's uh, an important step. What's most significant about this to me is the involvement or the willingness of the Ministry of Education for the first time that I've ever seen to be involved jointly in this area mm. with a project like that, and I think that's great. And we've been fighting since the year 2000 for them to be involved in joint community use, education use facilities in the northeast of the city. And it's, it is overdue, but you have to say it's great when it happens, um, and it certainly is. I, my word of caution is that uh, I don't think this is the end of the story in terms of recreation needs, either in that part of the city or overall. We're a growing city. Uh, that's a growing area of need, even with, in any city in the we're part of the country, and I think we're going to need to keep our eye on that ball whether it's in Rotatuna or in some other part of the city um, over the next few years and keep abreast of it. It's, uh, unfortunately, councils like ours have not, uh, have always looked at the need for more grassed sport rugby fields, but haven't looked at the need for other recreation facilities in a regular way. We do it in fits and starts, you know, and the, suddenly the, need, the bow wave builds up and we have to try and fulfil it. Let's plan for future needs in a better way in that area, I'd say, and it might be less painful when it actually happens. Um, the other thing I'd say is that uh, I'd like to congratulate the school on being so willing and keen to engage and involve the community because that's been a major difficulty at some other schools around here, and I think it's, uh, you know, it's a historical and cultural thing, and that, that mould is being broken out at Rotatuna. Um, we're going to, it does look like a partnership like we've not seen here before um, in an operational sense as well as in a capital sense and that is also really good and I hope we continue that and I hope that's an example to all other um, central government uh, and local community uh, joint opportunities that we have in the city in the future. Thank you. Any other speakers? Yes, Deputy Mayor. Yes, uh, thanks, Your Worship. Look, I was delighted to uh, support the uh, resolution. 
it makes sense in every way that you look at it. And it also brings forward the reality uh, that this will uh, be a facility that will open late next year, I understand. And so, from many other projects we've talked about, um, this is becoming a reality. Uh, I think our ratepayers will thank us for making a decision today. I think the participating sports will acknowledge the decision by council. And I would like to acknowledge the work of WinTech and its management team consistently over five or six years. I've forgotten. Might have been seven or eight years. And uh, they were right at the start with us. And I think that had there not been constraints around the funding of it, um, that might have proceeded. In any case, this is a much better deal for the community, uh, a half price facility, if you like. And uh, I think the school has got a great opportunity to live up to uh, its mandate to be a community f facility. I know I have heard Councillor Gallagher frequently speak about the shame uh, of not being able to partner with schools. And I think about the swimming pool in the northeast. It's another critical facility whose time is here. And as a council, we need to be very careful about thinking about where the new community pool comes in our long-term planning. So I'd just like to urge all councillors uh, to support this resolution. As Margaret has said, it would be nice if we could uh, obtain a unanimous decision around the table, because I think it is such a worthwhile project. And as I said at the start, it's common sense. Okay, thank you, Councillor Yule. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, thank you, Megan. Thank you, Michelle, and all those people presented this morning. Um, I think we all read about a report there's a need for two four-course indoor recreation facilities in Hamilton. And, well, hopefully this is the first one. And as Megan said, it's now or never. And this is a great partnership with the Rural Junior High School and Ministry of Education. And I'm definitely, it will benefit the, the school community and everyone else. As the Deputy Mayor mentioned, the ratepayers will be happy, especially the ratepayers in the Northeast Hamilton. They've been waiting for a long, long time for such a facilities. And of course, I mean, recently we heard a lot of good news about the reservoir, maybe the extension of Bowman Road, Resolution Drive, and all the bits and pieces going on with the high school. And hopefully there will be more to come, maybe a town center, a shared library, and the aquatic center. So good news keep coming for the Hamilton North. So it's great. So I really urge every councillor, please vote for it. Thank you. Councillor Gallagher. Yes, um, obviously this in the end is, is, is the whole team effort and uh, it would be churlish not to acknowledge even the great advocacy of David Bennett, the local MP, to get the school in the first place. And I do not underestimate the um, arguments he had behind the scenes and the harassing and the hassling uh, because this is a huge, huge um, use of Hamilton taxpayer money for the, for the, for the high school campus for a start. And as we've discussed, and it's really good now to see that we're, we're starting to develop a process whereby the taxpayer pocket and the ratepayer pocket are merging, right? Because in the end, this is public money, but we're getting a better use and a more synergy uh, of that. And that we're moving away from a situation, and i very critical of boards of trustees around the city who, without any consultation with this council and community, fence off their schools for public use. This is the opposite. This is actually around uh, partnership. This is the true uh, community facility. So I've certainly been listening very closely to the strong advocacy of Councillor Green and Philip and Margaret and East Ward councillors on this one, because we've spent a lot of energy around the Hamilton East plan, Hamilton East Shore, Central City, Lake, Frankton. This is the North East plan. This is part of the North East plan. And this is one of the key ingredients. And I think we've got to get the info sheet up, as the millions we've already spent on the underground and the infrastructure in that part of the world. But the job certainly has not finished. And there's a job after this around potential library, 
swimming pool down the track, all of that. But this is really critical. Um, and you don't, you'd be very hard hearted not to listen to Monica Leggett. Again, he's had a lifetime of service to this community, along with people like Dave McPherson, Margaret Forsyth, all of those people who are involved in the youth. And the great thing, this is not just about what I say, the top elite teams. This is actually, from day one, this place will not be empty. And with respect, and I say this, you know, with respect to Claudelands and the stadiums, you go past on some days, there's no one there. This day, from day one, will have seven day, 20, you know, seven day access. This will be a, a, a true um, community um, facility. So I'm um, going to support this, and I think this is a very astute, uh, sensible use of the money. Let me also join Dave finally in acknowledging uh, Mark Clowes and the, the WinTech advocacy. And let me say to Mark Clowes and others down the track, this is not the end of the story, right? Because there's very clearly a need for these facilities across our whole city as the city grows. We've got the Rotokaru growth cell coming up. But I think this kind of model is a really good one. And I think, um, as I said before, this is a very uh, unique uh, opportunity. And like with others, I'm going to thank Megan and her team for, the, for, the, for engaging with us, right? Because we now do honestly see the vision. Thank you. OK, any other speakers for or again, Councillor Clem? Yeah, I'd just um, like to say that bringing this deal together is a credit to Megan Campbell, uh, using all her diplomatic skills to pull this together. Uh, also to staff, uh, Lance, good on you. And uh, Margaret, I think you've really been behind this right from the start. So congratulations to Councillor Margaret Forsyth for sticking with this and seeing it through. Right, any other speakers for or against? I'll just make a couple of comments. In 2012, when we were doing the long-term plan uh, for that uh, period, I think the greatest angst that councillors at that time had was the removal of this project from that budget. And I think it was about a day of people coming and going and submissions made about trying to retain that in the work programme. And for circumstances which are, are widely canvassed, things had to be removed. And I guess that was reflective of the chequered history we now talk about, about it was in and it was out and it was in and it was out. And sadly, this project has been one of those ones that has been, I guess, the fall guy in many respects. So what's really encouraging is in a short time later, a matter of a few years, we are now in a position where we're able to commit within a, a financial strategy to this project. So I think we need to stop and reflect on the accomplishments of this council to take us from that day to this day. The second thing that I want to comment on is the value of community infrastructure to the city. Because we do get bogged down. It's interesting the, the, the report today that we're looking at where we've just talked about lots of stuff under the ground and roads, which are very, very important. But the equal value that community infrastructure plays in cities, and this is what this is about and how important that is to make a well-rounded city, and let's not forget that. Um, partnerships are the way to go to deliver these sorts of things, and this is a very good example of that. We can do this because we're working together, and funders come to the table willingly and put their share in. And the reality is that is also something different from perhaps in the past. Um, and so thank you to those people involved. I want to thank Sport Waikato kind of forgotten a little bit about the role that they have played because remember that this comes off the back of a, of a regional infrastructure assessment report across the whole region about the needs as opposed to the wants of these sorts of facilities in our region. And what that report did was identify it's not one big one, it's a couple of ones, right? smaller is better, and where they are, were mostly required. And that gave the clarity that enabled this project to have you know, a starting point. So thank you, um, because that project has been enormously valuable, not only to the city, but to the region as well. So um, thank you for that. And um, look, Megan, pass on our thanks to the board. My thanks, everyone's thanks, I guess, that you've been a willing partner, as Martin said and others have said. Um, schools have traditionally gone through a period of, you know, 
locking people out. And your school and the program you're putting in there is recognising schools are actually the hub of communities and they need to open their doors and share their facilities. So thanks very much. It comes out of the same pocket at the end of the day. So thank you very much for that. And look, Lance, you've got an exceptional team. I think all of us are acknowledging that. Um, but I know you've worked very hard on this and I know people have been toing and froing with stuff uh, and going well behind the call of duty. And uh, I just want to acknowledge that you, know, you can have the people in the room doing the negotiations and advancing it, but unless you've got the relationships, it don't work. So thank you very much for that. Okay, right of reply. Is there anyone else? Yes, thank you. Look, I did. I was a little remiss. I think in my excitement, I did forget to thank Sport Waikato, Matthew Cooper, Michelle Holland. I know you've had a, a great lead in this um, project, and of course to Lance uh, and your uh, team that have. I know from the feedback that I've heard, you've really worked hard at those relationships and um, really been positively moving this project forward. So thank you as well. Okay, councillors, we're going to vote. That is the recommendation. You can probably take the yellow out now, Joe. Thank you. And um, we're voting on the board for that motion, for or against. Uh, Carried unanimously. Right. Well done. Might take. So, councillors, we might um, we might just take our afternoon tea break okay, now yeah, because we've co got a couple of other matters to deal with. So we might do <laughs> that, and we'll come back at 22. Yeah, yeah, Thanks. What is it? Oh,